Daily Bible Time. Good morning. It is Dominic Steele. Thanks for joining us. It's Friday morning, the 26th of April. We had a break yesterday from Daily Bible Time for Anzac Day. I was up at the crack of dawn with a stack of other people for the dawn service at Loyalty Square in Balmain. And great work by Matt Davies. Um, he senior minister at um, St Mary's Balmain who is also in the Army Reserve and he led that service and um, organised lots of things with the president of the Balmain RSL. Now, uh, 2 Corinthians today and we're working through Lionel Windsor's book, um, Truth Be Told, and we're up to a case study. We're working through Lionel Windsor's book and his title for the chapter on 2 Corinthians is called Truth amid pain and tears. Let me go straight to the conclusion, then I'll work through the content of the chapter. Um, He says, in many ways, 2 Corinthians acts like a case study that helps us to see what speaking the truth in love looks like in painful, difficult, messy, life today situations. Um, He says Paul and Timothy are in the messy situations, the same kind of messy pastoral situations that we're in today. There are basic, firstly, there are basic communication issues. There are emotional reactions. There's the allure of powerful displays of strength, of relativism, pragmatism, hearts prone to deception. And yet, in the face of these issues, Paul and Timothy keep remembering we live in a fallen world where human sin and Satan's deception are realities that can't be ignored, and yet they constantly focus themselves and their hearers on the grace of God. They keep remembering their ultimate allegiances to God, the God who loved them, who saw them, who would vindicate them, even when others didn't. And uh, wherever they could, they kept speaking the truth in love. And they did this not just for their own sakes, but for the sake of others so that the Corinthians would be built up in the truth of the gospel. Now, let's go through the chapter in a little more detail and see how those issues come to the surface. First one, Paul says basic communication issues. And uh, he deals with the basic communication issues, as Lionel Windsor notes, the kind of issues that we deal with. He was a traveling missionary. He moved around and uh, he made good use of the remote communication technology of his time writing letters but the letters weren't instantaneous they relied on human carriers the carriers couldn't always be guaranteed to turn up and they couldn't convey the emotional range and depth of face-to-face communication and were open to misreading and spin and um, really when you read the two corinthians you can see part of what paul is trying to correct is some of those basic communication issues i'm following lionel windsor here secondly Paul faced a situation where people were easily persuaded by powerful displays of strength and open to abuse. Um, Powerful leaders could come in, win people over with little regard for the truth. Um, And uh, they mocked and belittled Paul for his apparent weaknesses because he was gentle and he didn't ask for money. We see that in chapter 10. Um, They seem, it would appear, that the Corinthians were happy to be entertained by these super apostles and their shows of strength. And uh, they started to believe and even propagate the bizarre conspiracy theory that Paul was a deceiver. In fact, he was gentle and didn't ask for money. Didn't that prove he was tricky and untruthful? (laughs) Crazy. The Corinthians' love of powerful leaders made them wide open to spiritual abuse. Um, Third thing, um, Paul faced a tough situation where emotional reactions could easily overtake the truth. And um, he needed to call out bad behavior among the Corinthians. He knew that calling out this bad behavior would cause grief. He was genuinely anxious and uh, he couldn't be sure whether the grief he caused would have lasting effect leading to genuine repentance. We see that in chapter seven or whether those who were grieved would be so upset that they'd simply reject and slander him. And so that was a complexity. And then fourthly, um, philosophical relativism and pragmatism, highly influential in the context. Uh, those features, relativism and pragmatism, they're not just features of post-modernity, um, but they were features of the ancient sophistic thinking, which was very alive and well in, in the time of Paul when he was writing to the Corinthians. The pragmatist, the words aren't there to convey absolute truth. Words are tools to achieve the desired effect. Um, and so Paul calls them peddlers of God's word in 2 chapter 17. They boast according to the flesh in 11:18. They're using words not to convey truth, but to win influence and power. 
And then uh, finally, and fifthly, um, Paul and Timothy face a situation where the, huma- where the people he's writing to are open to deception in their hearts. And um, powerful dynamics of deceit. As the serpent deceived Eve, by his cunning, your thoughts will be led astray from a sincere and pure devotion to Christ, that there would be spinning narratives, sowing confusion, playing the victim, uh, denying consequences, questioning motives. So let me lead in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the example of Paul and Timothy here. We pray that you would help us to keep in mind like them that we live in a fallen world where human sin and Satan's deception are realities that can't be ignored. We pray that we would be um, focusing ourselves and our hearers on your grace to us. We pray, Lord, that um, you would help us to remember that our ultimate allegiance is to you, to God. And fourthly, Lord, we pray that we wouldn't be silent in the face of slander, that we would keep on speaking the truth. We defend ourselves and our actions, uh, but we would believe in and practice forgiveness, love, peace and reconciliation. And we pray this in Christ's powerful name. Amen.